in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The labor of all church workers shall never be in vain as our Father, the Father of all globally, the Covenant of GCK, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui gives us the Global Church Workers Conference live from Taraba State, Nigeria. All church workers and ministers globally to join hands with all ministers across Taraba State, Northern Nigeria from 17 to 20 November 2022. It's our time for triumphing in ministry, even in troublous times. Pastor Dr. W. F. Kubuyi will be ministering 8 a.m. daily from Jalingo, Taraba State, to the world, via satellites and on all our social media platforms. It will be an avalanche of global expositions and revelations. Your labor will not be in vain. When we started the year 2022, you had hopes, you had desires, you had dreams. But suddenly, all over the globe, we read and hear of failures economically, politically, with climate change and security breaches here and there. And now, I hear a voice echoing towards the northeastern geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Now, I hear a voice echoing towards the northeastern geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Today, the Lord is saying, weep not. All your tears are dried, because behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has prevailed. And it's confirmed that there's still one hope, one way, one solution, and one power that never fails. The power of Jesus Christ reverberates this November with GCK live from Adamawa State, Nigeria. The land of beauty set to beautify your life through Christ. As the covenant of GCK, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumuyi will touch down in Adamawa, Nigeria with a power that never fails. Healing, deliverance, salvation. November 24 to 29, 2022. 1600 hours GMT daily and 0700 hours GMT for Sunday worship service. Young people from all levels will be empowered for excellence at the Impact Academy on November 26, 2022 at 0600 hours GMT. Ministers and professionals will be empowered for breakthrough in ministry on November 25, 26, 28 and 29 at 0600 hours GMT. Our guest gospel minister is Bob Feets. This is an avalanche of manifestation of the power that never fails for all life. Power will herald your celebration. Dr. William Kumui says, Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. GCK, the gospel to every creature. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for this morning session we're going to have now. We thank you because salvation is so great and so high. We do not know what we could have done, or it not for your plan of salvation. But we're grateful to you because of your love that gave Jesus Christ to die for us on the cross of Calvary so that we we'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, our sins will be forgiven, we'll have the joy of heaven, the joy of salvation. And then we can spend eternity with you. We pray, Lord, that as we look into your word this morning, we allow you to teach us and to instruct us in the way of righteousness in Jesus' name. And we pray that these words will benefit every one of us. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. In the session we have now, we have a teaching session, which is Bible teaching. And um, I want to appeal to you as students that you will really learn as we teach. Uh, generally, when you look at many fellowships today, 
it appears that they've lost what it means to have real teaching in the word of God. And everything seems to be emotional. Everything seems to be based on what they feel. And we use less of our brain, less of our mind, than we use of our feeling and we use of the other senses. And in fact, in some fellowships, they use more of their feet in dancing, more of their hands in clapping, than using their brain to think through and to see what the Word of God has to teach us. And in these teaching sessions in particular, I appeal to you that you allow the words that we're going to look into to sink deep down into your heart, into your mind, so that the words will do you good. Let's look at the words of Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, reading from verse 44. Let these saints sink down into your ears, for the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. Jesus Christ called upon his own disciples, and he told them he wanted the saints, the words, the teachings, to sink into their ears. And it is the same thing we are applying to ourselves today, that the word of God will sink very deep into the mind, into the heart of everyone. And as uh, students, I expect that you shouldn't just have your Bible, you should have your Bible, and you shouldn't have just a part of the Bible. You should have both the Old and the New Testament. You know, it surprises me when I see some so-called Christians, and I carry some of these little things about, that is, um, you know, either in New Testament, if they are going to a particular meeting, I don't know whether they do not expect we should quote from Genesis or from the Psalms, or from Job or Ecclesiastes, or we should quote from Isaiah or Daniel or Hosea, or some of these revelations, deep revelations of God in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. They just have a little New Testament with them, and, uh, you know, they come to the meeting. And when we quote references out of the New Testament, that is, we get into the Old Testament, they are lost. How many of you have the complete Bible here this morning? Can you all sit up? Thank you very much. I like for students to have the textbook on hand and to know that that is indispensable. Uh, so we're going to look at the word of God this morning on the two verbs. The two verbs. Everyone is familiar with the natural birth, and that is a first birth. But not everyone has experience concerning the new birth, which is the second birth. And we have been told in scripture of the importance of being born again, born anew, born from above, born of the Spirit of God. The natural birth relates to our natural life. It is the new birth that relates to our spiritual life. You would know as a human being that the first birth terminates in death. Man is born to die. And if you are born only once, you are going to die twice. There is the physical death and there is a spiritual death. There is the eternal death. If you are born twice, born first of the flesh, born second of the spirit, then you die only once, and you may not even die once at all, because the trumpet may sound, and the Lord may come to call us away. So, when you are born twice, you are born of your parents, which has taken place already, that is why you are here. And then you are born the second time, you are born again, born anew, born of the Spirit of God, then you have life eternal, which means then, the first birth terminates in death. But the second birth, which is the new birth, leads us into everlasting life, eternal life, the very life of God. As we look at the natural birth and the new birth, there are some interesting things as we look at both births. One, you will see the comparison between the two. We put this on this side, we put that on that side, we compare the two and see the similarities. But then we do not only see the similarities, we see the differences. Therefore, we're going to look at the contrast between the two births. So my point number one, or part one, is the comparison and the contrast between the two births. Uh, when we deal with that, you will see the necessity of being born again, which will lead us to point two, necessity of the new birth. 
and then will lead us to point three, the marks of the new birth. When you are born again, how do you know? When you are born again, how does heaven know? When you are born again, how do your neighbors know what are the marks, the characteristics that will see in your life, that will see your disposition, everything that you do, that will make us to know that you are actually born again, born anew. You have tasted, you have experienced of the new birth. Let's go to the first point, subtitle number one. The comparison and the contrast between the two births. And uh, first of all, let us look at John chapter 3. John chapter 3. I'm reading to you from verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher. Come from God. For no man can do these things that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, that means, Truly, truly, certainly, certainly, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time? into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, certainly, certainly, without any shadow of doubt, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot see, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound. Thereof and canst not tell, but canst not tell whither it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master, a teacher yourself, a ruler in Israel, and knoweth not these things? Jesus Christ himself spoke about being born again. He said it over and over. And he put the stamp of heaven's approval upon it when he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, as he says to everyone else, except a man be born again. He cannot see, he cannot enter, he cannot partake of the benefits of the kingdom of God. Well then, since the Lord Jesus Christ used the terminology of being born again, or in the other parts of the New Testament, being begotten of God, or as you look at it, becoming babes in Christ. So since these terminologies are there in the Bible, how can we understand, how can we compare uh, between the first birth and the second birth, the natural and the new, the natural and the supernatural or the spiritual. First, we look at the comparison. And these comparisons relate to the time before you are born again. Now think of a child before the child is born. Although the child exists, but the child is not counted as part of the human family. Although we can see very clearly that the mother is carrying a baby, but you see that baby is not counted as part of the family because the child is not born yet. Isn't that so? With those who are not born again, although we can see that Christ is interested in them, they are interested in Christ, they may be very near to the church, they may even congregate with us and fellowship with us, but because they are not born again, they are not counted as the family of God. Not only that, you will see that the child that is not yet born is completely closed and enveloped in darkness. We see the sun. We see the light. We see everything around us. And although that child has a kind of light, but that child is not seeing the light. He has eyes he cannot see. And it dwells in darkness completely. All through that time, although he might be getting some nutrient or nourishment from the father, because of the cord that binds them together, and yet that child is in darkness. Don't you see it is the same thing for somebody who is not born again yet? Although he may be having some benefits from God, there are times God will even give him food and give him clothes and give him protection, might even give him healing, might even give him some things, but he's still in darkness even until this time. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17. Ephesians chapter 4 
reading from verse 17 it says that i said this i said therefore and testify in the lord that henceforth ye walk not as other gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind 18 having the understanding dark age being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blackness of their heart so then we know that child is born in the natural he remains in darkness before a person is born again he is in darkness even until now number two you see the child that is not yet born in a way is linked with the family and yet not part of the family can you think of something like that already when the mother as the mother gets pregnant and the mother will be rejoicing a baby is coming a baby is coming but nobody knows yet whether that child will really come or whether there will be a miscarriage or abortion although the joy is there although the link is there and then the mother is advised to take this kind of food and take milk and take this and that and have a balanced diet so that the baby yet to be born that is linked to the family or linked with the mother will be able to have everything that he ought to have to grow and yet very much linked to the mother linked to the family yet not part of the family don't you see that before somebody is born again he may have a link with a denomination he may have a link with the church it may be that the person will say i am anglican i am i am catholic i am methodist he might even say i am deep alive he might even say i am baptist he has a link with the people of god he has a link even with the lord he might have a bible don't you know the people that are not born again yet and they have two or three bibles and they have commentaries and they have christian literature there is a link between them and the people of god and the family of god yet yet they are not part of the family they come to church like everybody comes and the ushers will even count and say we have one two three four and then count about 200 we have 200 in church today and the pastor of that church may even say our church is becoming bigger because of all these people that are there you see just as the mother is rejoicing that you know the pregnancy is there and yet and yet that person that is not born again is not part of the family of god in romans chapter 9 Romans chapter 9, reading to you from verse 6. Not as though the watch has taken on effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. You see that? They are not all Israel which are of Israel. They have a link. They have an association. They have an interest. They may even read the Bible, the word of God, the oracles of God, given through those people of Israel. Although the link is there, yet they are not counted as part of the family of God. And in verse 8, that is, they that are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God. The people that I was born by Christian parents. I've been going to Sunday school since I was born. These people that are of the flesh. Of the flesh, they were brought to Sunday school. Of the flesh, they were brought to a denomination. And yet it says, these are not the children of God. But the children of promise are counted for the seed. It is when you go beyond just coming to church. And you look at the promise of God that tells you what it means to be born again. And then you are born again. Number three. We're still comparing the two parts so near yet so far so near yet so far you see when conception has taken place the other children in the family they're rejoicing because you know those children they do not have any experience at all they say we're going to have a junior brother we're going to have a junior sister and they will be telling daddy and mommy what's going to be the name of our junior sister they're already talking about that individual so near and yet the parents know that he's still so far even when labor pain has started even when the child is about to be born you know they send to the ward and they say that this person is laboring now and the nurses are running up and down so near yet so far because you know you don't know the outcome yet we cannot say that this is part of the family yet and they are not people like that that uh, they, they appear to be near to the kingdom of god but they are not in the kingdom of god yet they appear to be near but they're still very far in fact you know there are people that are so near into the to the kingdom of god they know about repentance but they have not repented they know what it means to believe on the lord jesus christ but they have not they are, i can count for you the people that are not born again yet that will tell you yes i know restitution is in the bible 
How did you know that? Oh, he said, I've been near the church all the time. I've been coming to the Sunday meetings. I've been listening to the cassettes. I've been listening to this and that. So near yet so far. They can tell you about the second coming of the Lord. And he can sing many songs. How many people do you know that are not born again yet? And he can sing the songs of Zion. And he can sing the songs in the book. They can sing about God, about Christ, about the Holy Spirit. They can sing about the eternity of God, the divinity of Christ. They can sing about the power of the Spirit of God. They can even give you some testimonies. They will tell you, I believe in God the Creator. He created the heavens and the earth. They know the stories of the Bible. You check up from them and they will tell you how David killed Goliath. They will tell you a lot of the stories in the Bible. They will sing Christmas carols. They will, they will sing about how Jesus was born in Bethlehem. There was no place in him. They tell a lot of stories about how Jesus Christ was born. At the time of Easter, they are going to tell you how Jesus was betrayed. They know the name of the person that betrayed Jesus Christ. They even know the name of the fellow of the disciple that tried to cut off the ear of that of one of the servants of the high priest. And they know all these things, but do you know so near? so far not born again yet they do not know what it means to know the lord although they appear to be very near in mark chapter 12. mark chapter 12 reading to you from verse 32 mark 12 from 32 to 34 and the scribe said unto him well master thou hast said the truth for there is for there is one god and there is none other like but he and to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, and with all the soul, with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all the whole bunch of friends and sacrifices. Who is talking here? Is this an apostle? Is this a disciple? Is this a child of the kingdom? Look at the great doctrine that he brings out. He said, Master, you have said the truth. And then he even added unto it. He amplified it. And he said, to love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself is greater, better than all the bond sacrifices of the Old Testament. And then look at what Jesus said in verse 34. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, uh, discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. You are not there yet, but you are not far. So near and yet so far. And that is what we learn of the comparison between the child that is yet to be born and the one that is yet to be born again. Number four is supported by the mother yet without knowing the mother supported by the mother yet without knowing the mother you think about it that that child that is yet to be born is getting everything for sustenance uh, from that mother and yet has never seen the face of the mother does not even know that you call him, you call her mother uh, to, to him to that child yet to be born is the unknown mother the unknown personality that is supplying all these things to me and yet I don't even know her. The same thing for the people that are not born again. The Bible says that he gives us life. He gives us food. He gives us everything. You know, Jesus Christ said he gives rain to the just and to the unjust. And yet a lot of these people that are receiving these things from the Lord, they do not know the Lord. They don't know him as father. They do not have experiential relationship. They do not have a kind of experience that will make them related unto the Lord. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 17. Acts of the Apostles chapter 17. Verse 23. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. To the unknown God. Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. And then he began to tell them in verse 24, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is he worshipped with men's hands, as though he needeth anything. Look at this. Seeing he giveth to all life and health and all things you see those people they didn't know god to the unknown god and yet it is that unknown god that sustains their lives that unknown god that supports them that unknown god that gives them everything they live by it is just like that child unborn yet that is supported and sustained by the mother yet not knowing the mother number five you see, when the child is not yet born, the child has eyes and the child has ears and the child has brain. But eyes that cannot see. 
ears that cannot hear and brain that cannot think the brain is there but you cannot think the mind is there but you cannot you know put things together does not know any part of the alphabet does not know a lot of things that we now know after we become born again in Isaiah chapter 40 at chapter 48 Isaiah chapter 48 reading verse 8 Ye thou hadest not Ye thou knewest not Ye from that time that thine ear was not opened for I knew thee I knew that thou wouldest deal treacherously and was called this transgressor from the womb. You see this child was still in the womb, and God said that the ears were not yet opened. Although the ears were there, but the ears could not hear all the various sounds. Now could a mother pet that unborn baby? Can say, keep quiet, stop kicking. It's so inconvenient for me. Oh no, the child cannot hear anything. Isn't it the same with those who are born again? You are surprised here we come, and we all sit down. And we hear the word of God. And the word is so clear on salvation. The word is so clear on repentance. The word is so clear on believing on the Lord Jesus Christ so that you will be saved. And then eventually we come out of that service and you ask this, uh, you know, fellow student and you say, how was that message? Who well, said it was nice. And he said, what's nice about it? He said, you know, uh, there were some grammatical uh, constructions in that. Uh, you know, that man, I just like his grammar. And you know, they, as they put all those subtitles and, uh, you know, things together and said, one, two, three, you know, maybe he did math mathematics. And I just, I like listening to that man. And uh, are you born again yet? What do you mean by born again? That man repeated being born again more than 10 times. Well, I thought he was just using grammar. I thought it was a kind of esoteric thing that he was mentioning. I thought it was philosophical. I was just appreciating the philosophy of what he was saying. I didn't really know what he meant. You see, having ears, they cannot hear. Having eyes, they cannot see. Having minds, they cannot see. But you see, when you are born again, it is then these ears become wonderful and you begin to hear how many people know the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation and yet they are not born again. If you confront a Jehovah's Witness man, a Jehovah's Witness girl, and uh, you know, they go into the word of God, although they jumble everything together, confuse everything and put A for B and put C for D. Although they do that, but they know some references they can confuse the ignorant people with. They are not born again, and yet they feel they know a lot of things. It is when you become born again, all of a sudden, the things that were cloudy to you before everything becomes opened unto you. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28, verse 27. Acts 28, verse 27. For the heart of these people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and shall be converted and I should heal them. Now you will see that these people that Paul the Apostle spoke about, they were having ears they couldn't hear, eyes there they couldn't see. In fact, in another part of the New Testament it said, the scriptures that they read every Sabbath day, they didn't understand. You see, we have compared between the natural birth and the new birth, the first birth and the second birth. Although there are similarities, there is also contrast, differences. Now, I want to touch on some of the differences between uh, being born of the flesh and being born of the spirit. Being born in the natural and being born in the spiritual. That means we're not looking at the differences between them. Number one of the differences, the one that is born in the natural just has the birth that is of the flesh. Born of the flesh. And the one that is born in the, the second time, born anew, is born of the Spirit of God. You see the difference? One is of the flesh. The other one is of the Spirit. In John chapter 3 verse 6. John chapter 3 verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. What's the significance of that? To understand the significance of that, we have to go to Galatians chapter 5. Verse 19 through to verse 21. And then the latter part, which is being born of the Spirit, verses 22 and 23. Now verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. 
idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, laws, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Those are the people that are born of the flesh. And I said they are born of the flesh. These are the characteristics of the fleshly life. The fleshly characteristics of the fleshly works. You are born of the flesh. You have not tasted of the grace of God. You are just a natural man. What the natural man will do is the least that we have here. There will be adultery. Adultery means uh, the immoral relationship between uh, people that are not married together, but one or two of them will marry to other people. And uh, it talks about fornication as well. Among young people, you have the sin of the flesh. You see, there are young people that are controlled by the flesh, controlled by the feelings in their flesh, controlled by the emotions in, the, in them. It says fornication. And then it talks of uncleanness. There are those who get into pornography. They read all these magazines with all this kind of literature that, that has a moral language, immoral pictures, and stories that uh, will corrupt their minds. Then it, they get into the practice. It may be they get into the practice of masturbation. It may be they get into the practice of sodomy. As those two boys are maybe sleeping together, and then they begin to do evil together. It may be also that uh, you know two ladies are living together, sleeping together. They begin to have the work, the works of the flesh, immorality and uncleanness. And it talks of lasciviousness, talks of idolatry. Those people that worship idol. Now you may say that, well, we are educated people, we don't worship idol. They are educated people, you'll be surprised, they worship idol more than the idol worshippers in the villages. There are some students that are, they have a big notebook. Uh, when this happens, you, you take a cockroach and you take a lizard and you take the back of the purple tree and put everything together and you take some onion and you, you know, do this and mix everything together. If you eat that and if you swallow that, you are going to get grade one, you are going to get distinction. Somebody deceived them that they didn't have to use their brain, they don't have to go to the library, they don't have to write their notes, they don't have to do anything at all. If they just know the right color of the chameleon to burn, if they just know the right color of the lizard to put together, and they're able to swallow everything, though it may be poisonous, if they're able to swallow everything one way or the other, the lizard that does not know mathematics, when that lizard was alive, when that lizard is burnt in fire and put into charcoal form, then mathematics will just come into your brain as a result of, uh, as a result of eating and swallowing the ignorant, illiterate lizard. Uh, you know, don't you think about, you know, these intelligent people that uh, say a lot of this thing. You see, that is idol worshipping. And it says the people that do not know God, it says that they're going to have idolatry. And it talks of witchcraft, or sorcery, or familiar spirit. It talks of hatred, malice. You know, it says, I just hate that individual. I don't like the sound of her voice. I don't want to see her around at all. These are the works of the flesh. And therefore, if you are born of the flesh, then you are the works of the flesh. Let's go to uh, the second part, which is being born of the Spirit of God. In verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance against such, there is no law. It's telling us that when you come of the Spirit, there will be a change. A change in your life. And things will turn in a dramatic way. You will be transformed. Well, let's go to the second difference, number two, is that when you are just of the flesh, you are born by the will of man. That's the first birth, that's the natural birth. When you are born of God, you are born again, you are born of God. On the one hand, you, you are the decision of your mother and your father. Your parents decided they wanted another child, or they wanted a first child, or they, they were praying to God, oh God, give us a child, give us a child. They willed it, they desired it, they planned it, and eventually you came. So you were born of the will of man. But in the case of being born again, it is not the will of man eh, that makes you to be born again. It is the very will of God. In John chapter 1 verse 12 and verse 13. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, and not of the will of man, but of God. You can see on the one side there, those who are born in the natural sense, they are born of the flesh, 
born of the will of the flesh, born of blood, born of the will of man. On the other hand, when you are born again, you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, it's a higher thing. It's not just the will of a man that brings you into the kingdom. It is the very will of God, not wanting you to perish, that has brought you into the kingdom of God. Number three, when you are born in the natural, you are born into the world. When you are born in the, in, with the new birth, you are born into the kingdom of God. Let's look at the first part. You are born in the natural, you are born into the world. Born into the world. In Job chapter 5, Job chapter 5, reading from verse 7. In Job 5, 7, it said, Yea, man that is born, man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upwards. You see, the natural birth gets you into trouble. You are born into the world of pain, into the world of trouble, into the world of evil. In fact, you see with most births, and when the child is born like this, is born sometimes with jundice, born sometimes with some deformity, born sometimes with a hole in the heart, born sometimes with a kind of blood system that is not very, very healthy, born with retardation, born with a lot of problems. That is the first part. You are born into the world, into the world of trouble. In Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14, verse 1. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Man that a person that is born of a woman, born into this world of a few days and is full of trouble. In Job chapter 15, verse 14. What is man that he should be clean? And he that is born of a woman that he should be righteous. So you are born into this world and you are righteous. You are born into this world and you are sinful. You are born into this world, you are born into trouble. But then when you are born of God, you are born into the kingdom of God. And there's no darkness there, there's no evil there, and there's no weakness there. You are born into the kingdom, into the realm of the king, into the realm of the king, Jesus Christ. In Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and verse 14, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So then, you see the difference when a person is born into this world, that is born in the natural, is born into the world of trouble. But when somebody is born again, born anew, born by the power of God, is born into the kingdom of God. Number four. When a person is born in the natural, you, you are born without your personal decision. You are born without your personal decision. Uh, you know, sometimes there are some of us young people that will look at our family set up and look at uh, the mother and look at the father and look at all the surrounding. And then a thought will come into your mind. You will say, why wasn't I born in another family? Who are you saying that? You say, if I had my way, if I had my choice, I wouldn't be in a family like this. When you, when you think of, um, you know, the condition in the country, and you hear of, uh, you know, what is going on in another place, although what you hear is not exactly correct, but sometimes you hear the news in other places, and you say, well, why was I even born in Nigeria? Why wasn't I born in another place? Maybe the place you are mentioning, you want to be born in Thailand, and, uh, you know, it's the land of Buddhism. It's the land of, uh, a land of idolatry. But because you don't know that perspective you say why wasn't i born in the land of technology if i was born in japan well if you are born in japan very likely your name might not be in the book of life by now because uh, the percentage of christianity in that place is less than one percent and uh, you might not be one of those lucky people that will come across the gospel well what i'm saying is that here you are you are born into this country it was not by your choice you did not have a personal decision concerning it. When you are born again, that is very different. You are born again by your personal decision. I put before you life and death. Choose life that ye may live. So then you know that to be born again, that comes out of your personal decision. In John chapter 6 verse 37. John chapter 6 verse 37 All that the Father giveth me shall come to me and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out 
him that cometh or whosoever will let him take of the water of life freely which means your personal choice your personal decision comes into play when you are to be born again number five when you are born of the of the flesh or you are born the first time you have you possess the human nature human nature but then when you are born of god you know what you have you have a divine nature god's nature when it says that when you are born first time, you are born of the flesh, you have a human nature. Uh, what scripture do you have for that? In Psalm 51. Psalm 51 verse 5. It says, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. That's the first birth. When you are born that first time, you have a depraved nature, a human nature, a sinful nature. You see, when you look at a little child, Nobody teaches that child to steal, to cover up and to lie, to be wicked and to be uh, naughty to the parents or to be disobedient. It is part of the nature that that child brought into this life, into this world. That is the thing that you have as a result of the first birth. But then when you are born again, you now have God's nature. In Second Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and verse 4. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So then you understand that when you are born again, the, the old nature is dealt with and now God passes unto you the very nature of God. From all that we have said concerning the comparison between uh, the first birth and the new birth, the contrast between the natural birth and the new birth, from all that we have seen, you will know that it is very necessary if you want to see the kingdom of God, if you want to enjoy peace with God, if you want to spend eternity with Almighty God after this world, it is very necessary that you are born again. That leads me to the second part of the message, necessity of the new birth. Necessity of the new birth. We go back to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And this is so very important because here is Jesus Christ, the King of the Kingdom. Here is Jesus Christ, the only beloved, begotten Son of God. Here is Jesus Christ, the very personification of the truth, who says, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. Here is Jesus Christ, the only way that leads us to life eternal and leads us to God, telling us of the necessity of the fact that it is indispensable to be born again. It says in John chapter 3 from verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say, or I say unto thee, Except, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ said, Except a man anywhere be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The Jews were religious. And he thought their religion would make them to get to the kingdom of God without repenting and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, except a man, even though he be a religious Jew, be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The Pharisees were self-righteous. They were the people that thought they were righteous and they despised others. And then Jesus said, except a man, even though that man may be a self-righteous Pharisee, except he is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There were some of the people that were philanthropic, in the sense that they will give things to the beggars, and they will give tithes of all that they possess. And one of them came to the temple and said, God, you know, I am not like this other man. I am not an extortioner. I even give the tithes of all that I possess. And Jesus said, except a man, even though he be so very generous to people, except he be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Whoever we are, whoever you are, if you have not tasted of the grace of God, you have not been born again. The power of Christ has not come into your very heart to turn you around and to change you and to transform you. Except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. There are some people that will say, uh, you know, since I uh, you know, started growing, 
I did not uh, go to do all those other things that the other people are doing. I tried to be honest. I tried to be this. I tried to be that. And you find, uh, you know, in your history books, you read perhaps about some Gentiles, about some people that it appeared they were righteous. When you look at them, if you have studied ancient history, you will see Seneca. And Seneca, we are told in history, he was like a person that was a moral standard. But those other people, in his writing, in his philosophy, in his way of doing things, you will see that he was like that, just wanting to be righteous. And yet, do you know that all that righteousness that you can have on your own will not recommend you unto God? In your business books, you might have been told on, on how to deal in business and how to really make a success in business. And successful businessmen will tell you that, number one, there should be honesty, there should be diligence, there should be perseverance. And they tell you a lot of good characteristics and he'll give you examples of uh, that individual and that individual that is because of the honesty. It's because he was so generous and it's because everybody knew him. If you check up his boots, if you check up his paying tax, everything was all right. And then you might think that I will do like that too. If I can do like that and I'm honest in my business and I'm honest in everything, I'll be okay. Not you cannot be okay. You will not be as righteous as will qualify you for heaven because except a man as honest as you may be, be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There are some people that have done some rituals and they have some religious ceremonies. And they say, I don't eat this, I don't eat that, I'm a vegetarian. I'm so sensitive that I cannot, I cannot think of people killing animals and eating animals. Therefore, I keep myself to this. And they think because of that, they are soft in nature. They think because of that, their perspective, that they are going to inherit the kingdom of God all alone by themselves. But it says, except a man, whatever man. It may be that you take care of animals. It may be that you are so sensitive. It may be that you even fight for public justice. And you say, when Ever there is injustice in society, be it at school or in the government or anywhere, we're going to fight for it because we do not want injustice except a man, a man that may be a social critic. Except that man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You see, it is so very important to be born again. So therefore Jesus said, except, except a man, whatever man it may be, be born again, he cannot see. He will not see and he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Let me show you the example of a man. That as you look at the man, it appeared that the man would have been able to make it if anybody could make it without being born again. But he couldn't make it in Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10 and from verse 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and knew to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Yeah, this man was interested in eternal life. He ran, he came to Jesus Christ. He even called Jesus by a good name. Have you seen some religious people, whenever they are singing and they come across the name of Jesus, they will bow the head religiously. And whenever they come across the name of Jesus while singing in their ladies, they will bend the knee religiously. And can you, can you say they are born again because of that or no? A lot of people that run to prayer houses, a lot of people that carry big Bibles around, a lot of people that have a lot of books in their library on Christianity, on Christ, on salvation, and a lot of things. Not all those people are born again. These fellow ran to Jesus Christ and he said, Good master, what shall I do? What shall I do? that I will inherit eternal life. In verse 19, thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill and do not steal and do not bear false witness. They thought not, honor your father and mother. What was his answer? And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Now here is a man. If somebody, a self-righteous man could make it, this man should have made it. And Jesus knew he was telling the truth. He tried to keep himself away from every bad company. He tried to keep himself away from every evil conduct. And then he said, all this I have done for my youth. Without knowing you, I did that. Without knowing that there was even anybody called Jesus, I did that. Without the sacrifice on Calvary, I did that. Without being cleansed from my sin, I did that. Without having to manifest faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, I have done that already. And then in verse 21, then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest. 
go check up your life. If you have not been born again, no matter how, how you appear to be good, no matter how honest you appear to be, no matter how pure you appear to be, you don't have girlfriend, you don't have boyfriend, you don't drink and you don't smoke, you don't go to nightclub and you don't gamble, you don't have occultism, you don't have idolatry, you don't have this and you don't have that, and you do not do anything that is publicly unrighteous. Check up your life, you will see when you meet Jesus Christ, I will tell you, although you have done all those things, one thing thou lackest. One thing thou lackest. You know, it's uh, it's like a student at school, very good in a lot of subjects, and you know, you will get a pass mark here, distinction here, credit there. Everything is good, except in the compulsory subject, is lacking there. And although he appears to be an all-rounder, and he will say that, you know, he knows that, he knows that, he knows that, yet he's not able to make a good grade, he's not able to even pass at all, because of one thing thou lackest. It is the same thing. There are many people that may have pass mark here, pass mark here, pass mark there. You look at their character, you look at their language, you look at their outlook, you look at everything. And then there is still that one thing thou lackest. Have you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you made him your savior? You see your substitute? Have you looked at Calvary and have you said Calvary is for me? Have you plunged yourself by faith into the redeeming, cleansing blood of Jesus Christ? One thing thou lackest. And then Jesus said, go thy way. Sell whatsoever thou hast, give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take out thy cross and follow me. You see, he needed to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. He needed to give his life fully to Jesus Christ that his life will not be isolated from God. His life will become embedded in the life of Christ through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ that he could not do and he was sad at that saying and went away great for he had great possession. You see, there are people that may appear they are very near the kingdom of God, but they are far away. And if you have not been born again, if you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, this morning I'm telling you of the necessity of the new birth. The necessity of being born again. In John chapter 3 verse 36. John chapter 3 verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son has not life, and shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Whosoever it may be, a Jew or a Gentile, educated or illiterate, wise or barbarian, a generous person or a stingy fellow, whosoever it may be, he that does not believe on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Well, then it means that you need to be born again. You need to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. How do you get born again? In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. To show how to be born again. So that you will be a part of the kingdom of God. A part of the family of God. It says, for by grace. Uh, you say that... It says through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. It says, by grace are ye saved through faith. I need to explain to you those two words there, grace and faith. It is grace that gives. It is faith that receives. Grace comes from the hand of God. It is faith that makes the man to stretch out his hand and take what God is given. Grace is from above, and faith is the response from below to take what grace has provided. You see, when you think about grace, I want to use uh, the letters of the word grace to help you to remember what grace actually is. The letters G-R-A-C-E. It's God's redemption at Christ's expense. You see, you need redemption. You need to be bought from the slave market of sin. You need to know the Lord Jesus Christ so that he will be your redeemer. And when it says by grace you are saved, it means God's redemption at Christ's expense. Now you can also say it is God's righteousness at Christ's expense. You have no righteousness of your own. All your self-righteousness is like filthy rags and they will not recommend you unto God. For you to be saved in the sight of God, you need God's righteousness at Christ's expense. The riches of his grace, the riches of his glory. We can say grace is God's riches. 
at Christ's expense. Whether we're thinking of righteousness, or we're thinking of redemption, or we're thinking of the riches of God, it's the righteousness of God, the riches of God, the redemption coming from God at Christ's expense. So then, how do you get saved? By grace. It's given to you as a gift. It is not what you can work for. It says, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Now it says that you are saved by grace, but through faith. You need to have faith before you actually get that salvation from the Lord. You need to have faith before you can have that salvation from the Lord. But then what is faith? Many times when you ask some people, they say, are you born again? Well, they say, I'm trying to. What do you mean you're trying to? Well, I've been coming to the meetings. I've been trying to get saved. I've repented. I've done everything I thought I could do. But you know, I don't feel saved. And because I don't have the feeling, I don't think I've got it already. And therefore, you'll find such people, if there is a, they invite a speaker to the campus to come and talk on, you know, a particular topic, and after that message, uh, this individual says, if you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you want to have assurance you are saved, raise up your hand, you'll find them, although they have been in the choir, although they have been, been among the prayer teams, although they have been among the workers in quotes on the campus, they raise up their hands, I want to be sure, I want to be saved. And then another time, another person comes, and they're having a crusade said over there like a missions week on campus and uh, you know they are there and the person the fellow that is holding that meeting on the campus says if you want to be saved and be really sure and give your life to the lord raise up your hand this same individual will raise up the hand and then they also have a conference uh, perhaps they say retreat in the church in town and then in that retreat one of the messages is ye must be born again you need to have new life in christ at the end of the message if you want to be really saved and be sure you are saved where are you raise up your hand this same fellow the third time he raises up the hand and then if eventually uh, you know somebody is invited from maybe ghana or from somewhere and he said this is a fellow is a wonderful evangelist and he said you know praying for people they rush there and at the end of the meeting again that fellow says now salvation is very important and you need to give your life to the lord if you want to be said where are you raise up your hand this chronic seeker. He raises up the hand again. Here am I. I'll be raising up my hand. When Osborne came, I raised up my hand. When Bonke came, I raised up my hand. Uh, when we had a retreat, I raised up my hand. In the local church, I raised up my hand. In the Congress last year, I raised up my hand. Here I am again. If nobody wants to get saved, I'm still here. I want to get saved. How do you get saved? It says, by grace, are you saved? Through faith. What is faith? Well, faith, I'm going to use the letters of the word again, the letters of that word faith, F, I call facts, facts, F-A-C-T-S, the facts. You see, your faith is not based on feeling, your faith is based on fact. What fact? The facts that are as sure as the pillars of heaven. The fact that Jesus Christ came into this world, that's a fact. The fact that for your salvation, he went to the cross of, of Calvary and he died, that's a fact. The fact that he was buried and the fact that he rose from the dead and the fact that now whosoever, whosoever, anywhere, anytime, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So then number one, your faith is based on fact. Number two, which is the A, that is agreement. You see, that's the word of God. Whosoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Yes, I agree with that. I agree with that. I will not oppose the word of God. That is the promise of God. I know that God will not fail. Therefore, there is agreement in your heart that I am coming to Christ. He has called me. I am responding. And I know he's going to save me. I means internalization internalization that means you take that promise of god which is made to everybody the whosoever will you internalize it you make it your own you identify it as your own you possess it as your own you say he is calling me in particular and i am going to him and i'm going to take him i'm going to accept everything that he offers you internalize it it is not just for brother john it is not just for sister mary it is for me because you internalize it then it is yours what is the t there the t means trust it means trust it means now you have handed over yourself to the lord and though the winds may blow you trust him and though the water may come into the sheep, you trust him. And though the devil may try to afflict you with doubt and say, Do you think you are saved? 
Do you think you could be a child of God? Do you think that of all people, look at what you have done in the past. Do you think that God has accepted you? There is such a trust within you. You said, I've entrusted my life into the hands of the Lord. It's not because I'm strong. It's because he's strong. It's not because of my feeling. It is based on the fact that Jesus died for me. There is that trust that no wind can blow up. There is that trust that no storm can shake. There is that trust in God that nothing will be able to remove. And the age is for hope. That will surprise you that there is hope in this. You see, the moment you are saved, all the time now you are no more looking to the grave, you are looking to the sky. In the hope of a second coming. In the hope that is coming back for me. Every time you hear of death, you are not afraid anymore. Oh, you say that's a wonderful thing because the death of the righteous is a wonderful thing. You have hope in death. And then when you hear of the rapture, the coming of the Lord, you are not trembling, you are not saying, well, if they came today, what will I do? Because I'm not ready yet. The hope that is coming and when he comes, he's coming for you. And when you talk of the coming of Christ, it's like he's coming for you and you alone. And, uh, you know, somebody said, uh, somebody came to you and he said, uh, you know, I read a particular book and he said that the rapture has taken place in the earlier part of this 1993. And all of us that are here now, it's unfortunate for us who have missed the rapture. Well, you, you say no rapture has not taken place. Says, How do you know? Oh, you say, because I'm still here. Because if the rapture took place, you wouldn't find me here. Because that is my very hope. What am I doing here? If the rapture has taken place, I go and settle that it has not taken place. Why you don't see me here again? Then you know the rapture has taken place. You see, that is a person that has hope in the Lord. Do you have hope like that? Number one, fact. Then agreement. Then internalization. Then trust and then hope. Hope of eternal life. That God who cannot lie has given unto you. That's how to believe on the Lord. When you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ like that, you, then you can say, I know I am saved. A time is going. What are the marks of the new birth? Now that you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, it means you have repented of your sin, you have turned away from evil, and you have come unto the Lord Jesus Christ. What are the marks of the new birth? In 1 John chapter 3 from verse 5. 1 John chapter 3 from verse 5. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. When you are born again, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. He cannot sin. He will not sin. He cannot sin because he is born of God. That's the mark. You see, when you are born again, God does something. He makes Jesus Christ to become a resident in you. Oh yes, temptations will still come. The temptation to do this evil thing, the temptation to say that thing which is not correct, the temptation will come, but Christ living on the inside of you will not allow you to yield to that temptation. You have a changed life, a transformed life, and that is one of the marks of being born again. In First John chapter 5 from verse 3. First John chapter 5 from verse 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. You see, when you are born again, God gives you the grace to overcome the world. Now you see a lot of attractions and distractions will come from the world. But then you are able to overcome. You say, no, I don't do that. I wouldn't do that. They say they are going to have their party and they are inviting you and it is free. Or somebody says you can go uh, on the account on my, on my ticket. I'll, I'll take you there myself and you know whatever you want to drink and whatever. You know, you just want to have a night of pleasure because you know the student life is a hectic life. And don't you want to just relax once in a while? You say, no, I don't do that anymore. What? Why don't, why don't you do that? What's the matter with you? Because I'm born again. Born again. What's the meaning of being born again? I'm born again too. 
and in our fellowship uh, we have a lot of born again people too and uh, you know even the president of those born again people he also but in fact he's going to be there and uh, you know he drinks all that we drink and say well i don't know about he's born being born again but i know that i'm born again according to the word of god and i have overcome the world all those things that are attracting you from the world you overcome them and a lot of things that the worldly people are doing in their system you say i don't i can't do that anymore i don't even have the interest of doing that anymore why because you are born again whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith in verse 18 we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not you see how emphatic it is whosoever is born of God sinneth not there may be some people, they tell you, yes, we are born again. And they, are, they say they are born again. Every time before they pray, they confess sin. They will confess personal sin. They will confess the sin of the whole fellowship and group. Immediately they come together in their fellowship. Although they say they are born again, then the first thing they will do is that they come to confess and they say, God, we have no right to approach you. We have no right to come in your presence. Then what are you doing there? Then we, uh, they say that, well, because we are wretched people. I'm not a wretched person, are you? They say they are wretched. They say they are not worthy. They say they are sinful. They say they are so bad. They say they are still for, They make all these confessions. And then they say, but we come now and we confess all our sins. So that you will forgive us. Uh, what we have done, we shouldn't have done. What we should have done, we have not done. And we just come as miserable, wretched, blind people that do not know our left from our right. And sometimes we step up on ants and we don't even know. And sometimes we kill a mosquito and we may not know. And sometimes we may say something wrong and we don't know. Therefore, we are still all sinners. Thank God I'm not part of them. Because it says we know that whosoever you are born of God, he sinneth not. And then look at that verse 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, keepeth himself, keepeth himself, and that wicked one touches him not. You see, when you are a child of God, you will not be mixing with devil, a demon worshippers, demon possessed people, people that are still drinking and doing evil. You will not be mixing with the people that are still living in sin you keep yourself away from satan away from the works of the devil and away from sin so that the righteousness of christ will be lived out through you in john chapter 8 and verse 11 john chapter 8 verse 11 and she said no my lord and jesus said unto her neither do i condemn thee go and sin no more here yeah, jesus christ told this woman and this woman was just coming to the lord a babe in christ because she had been taking an adultery in the very act and the pharisees accused her said what do you say moses the lord said we should stone this woman because she has committed adultery what do you say was writing on the ground because it's a gracious god is a forgiving God, is a redeeming God, is the very Son of God. And then they, they said, What do you say? They wanted a verdict from him. And then he said, He of you that has no sin, let him cast the first stone. They were condemned and convicted in the house from the eldest to the youngest. And then they went away one by one. And then Jesus saw that woman and said, Has no man condemned you? Has no man been able to stone you? And she said, No man, Lord. And then forgiveness came. The grace of God came. And then the peace of of God came, the salvation of the Lord came. And then Jesus said, I came not into the world to condemn, but to save the world from their sin. So he said, I say unto you, I condemn you not, but now a change has come. Go and sin no more. Is that possible? I said, is that possible? By the grace of God, by the power of God, we are kept by the power of God. It is possible. And I pray to be possible in your life in Jesus' name. After all, we're told in verse 36 of this sin, chapter 8, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. No matter how strong the chain of sin that may be binding you, the Son of God has power to deliver you. He has the power to set you free. And if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free and free indeed. I want you to rise up and tell the Lord, I want to be free. I want to be free. I do not want to remain in bondage to sin. I want the mark of the new birth to be seen and to be known in my life. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. The Lord is calling you. If you have not been born again, you can be born again right now. 
Once you know the parts that Jesus died for you, you agree with those parts that it was for you Jesus died. You internalize it. You make it your own. You identify with that promise of God. You trust the Lord. And then it will give you the hope of eternal life that God was who cannot lie has promised you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Do not deceive yourself and do not allow anyone to deceive you. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Are you born of God? Are you free from sin? Does your life show that you are really born of God? Is it evident in your life that you are born again? Why can't you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ even now? Why can't you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ even now? Why can't you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ even now? And be born again, and be born again. It is by faith, not of works. It is by faith. Believe and it will be so. Turn away from your sin and then trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you know you are born again, tell him to give you the power to live a righteous life. So that that wicked one will not touch you. Right there where you are, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And when you are saved, you will not continue in sin. When you are saved, you will not continue in sin. The Son of God living within you will give you the strength, the grace, and the power to live a righteous life. Jesus died for you, that's a fact. He paid the whole penalty, the penalty for your sin, Jesus had paid, that's a fact. He will not reject you as you come unto him, that's a fact. Agree with that fact, agree with the promise of God, agree with God himself. Internalize that promise of God. Trust your soul, trust your heart, trust your life into the very hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in me, then come Satan life into you. Remember, you must be born again. You must be born again. And when you are born again, the evidence will be the change of life. In the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The labor of all church workers shall never be in vain as our father, the father of all globally, the convener of GCK, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui gives us the Global Church Workers Conference live. 
from Taraba State, Nigeria. All church workers and ministers globally to join hands with all ministers across Taraba State, Northern Nigeria from 17 to 20 November 2022. It's our time for triumphing in ministry, even in troublous times. Pastor Dr. W.F. Kubuyi will be ministering 8 a.m. daily from Jalingo, Taraba State, to the world via satellite and on all our social media platforms. It will be an avalanche of global expositions and revelations. Your labor will not be in vain. When we started the year 2022, you had hopes, you had desires, you had dreams, but suddenly, all over the globe, we read and hear of failures economically, politically, with climate change and security breaches here and there. And now, I hear a voice echoing towards the northeastern geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Now, I hear a voice echoing towards the northeastern geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Today, the Lord is saying, weep not. All your tears are dried because behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has prevailed. And it's confirmed that there's still one hope, one way, one solution and one power that never fails. The power of Jesus Christ reverberates this November with GCK live from Adamawa State, Nigeria. The land of beauty set to beautify your life through Christ. As the covenant of GCK, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi will touch down in Adamawa, Nigeria with a power that never fails. Healing. Deliverance, salvation. November 24 to 29, 2022. 1600 hours GMT daily and 0700 hours GMT for Sunday worship service. Young people from all levels will be empowered for excellence at the Impact Academy on November 26, 2022 at 0600 hours GMT. Ministers and professionals will be empowered for breakthrough in ministry on November 25, 26, 28 and 29 at 0600 hours GMT. GMT. Our guest gospel minister is Bob Feets. This is an avalanche of manifestation of the power that never fails for all lives. Power will herald your celebration. Dr. William Kumui says, Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. GCK, the gospel to every creature.